Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello. So nice to see some of your faces as well. Uh, so we are going to give folks maybe another minute or so to join us. Um, but in the meantime, just getting us all uh, a little bit oriented today. Most people joining us today have facilitated a world climate simulation or are looking to facilitate. So we're going to run the simulation as we would and as you all as participants, but we're also going to give a little bit of kind of side tips on some of the facilitation techniques that we're using, maybe give a little bit of insight into some of the Zoom features that we're using as well. So keep an eye out for that. And then we'll also have time at the end for just a Q&A if you have any clarifying questions that you want to ask about the process uh, and about any of the different features that we used or how a virtual world climate simulation might work for you all. So my name is Yasmin Zahar. I work uh, with the Climate Interactive team and I'm joined today by Carolyn McCarthy who works on the uh, UMass Climate Change Initiative team uh, with us here. Uh, so moving forward on some of the details of Zoom today. So for the facilitator side, what we've done is uh, I am the host in Zoom and we have Carolyn as our co-host. So in the Zoom account that we have, we can have one host and as many co-hosts. So take a look at the certain account that you have on Zoom to see how that works for you when you're facilitating. But at the moment, I am host and that means that I can control the breakout room features, which is probably the most technical part of facilitating this world climate simulation online. So we found that it's really nice to actually have two people facilitating together because there'll be certain parts which will identify where perhaps Carolyn is facilitating and presenting and I'll be making the breakout rooms in the back, kind of silently organizing that. So we found it's really useful if possible to facilitate with more than one person. So uh, I'm the host, Carolyn is co-host on Zoom. Um, on the participant side, what we've done is we have muted all participants. Uh, because we're a pretty big group today, we've not allowed participants to unmute themselves unless we do it manually. So depending on the size of your group, you can just choose to have them unmute themselves on their own. If it's maybe a smaller group and uh, you're okay with them unmuting themselves, but we find that it's nice to have us manually unmute people so that we can uh, have everybody speaking at the time. Uh, that they'd like and not get interrupted. And so on your control panel, if you kind of move your mouse a little bit, you see this black bar pop up and you'll see these two buttons here, participants and chat. So for participants, this is very useful. Uh, the chat feature allows us to uh, communicate with you all and for you all to communicate with each other and for you to ask us any questions. And the participants button uh, for starters allows you to see who else is on the call. And it's where you can find this raise hand button that has a red square around it here. Uh, and so this is how you can let us know that you would like to say something and so then we're able to unmute you. So uh, for your participants when you are facilitating this raise hand feature is pretty useful in knowing who to call on and you'll see how we utilize that during the session. And uh, it seems like most of you already have your videos on, which is great. 
Uh, so we do find that having video on is a great way to engage people a little more in the session. As we go on, you'll see we also utilize uh, what's called a virtual background for the different groups. So it's a great way to get people really engaged and it just allows you to see who else is on the call. So those are some of the main features uh, of Zoom that we really like to utilize. And so you'll see us using these different features uh, as we go and feel free to ask us any clarifying questions about some of those Zoom technicalities uh, as you think about how you might facilitate this as well. So welcome and thank you so much for being here. All right, thank you, Yasmin. Um, my name is Carolyn McCarthy and I'm here from the Climate Change Initiative. Um, for those who are taking facilitator notes sequentially as we go through the simulation, I wanna flag that at this point, I'm going to launch us into the introduction and behind the scenes, Yasmin, who is the more tech person, uh, she's currently breaking you up into breakout rooms. So you can either uh, do it on the spot. If you don't know who's going to be attending the day of, uh, you'll be able to generate those breakout rooms, you know, behind the scenes, or you can also prepare them ahead of time if you're leading a class with students and you know who will be attending, for example. So just a quick little facilitator flag for you there, and uh, I will get started. So Thank you so much for coming today. You are about to participate in the World Climate Simulation, where you'll be playing a negotiator at the United Nations Climate Change Negotiations. Uh, this simulation was developed by the Think Tank Climate Interactive in partnership with the Sloan, MIT Sloan School of Management and the Climate Change Initiative. So just a brief overview of the agenda today. Uh, we will start with a brief introduction and then you will receive your roles and your assignments to the regions that you'll be representing in the simulation itself. And then we will continue with a few rounds of negotiations, maybe two to three rounds. And then we will uh, end with a debrief where you'll be able to step outside of your roles and reflect on the simulation itself. We went with the six region version today because of the number of participants who signed up. So our negotiating parties are the United States, the European Union, the other developed nations, and you can see which nations are included in that group there. We also have uh, China, India, and other developed nations. We'll also be running this six region version with additional groups, including the fossil fuel lobbyists and the climate activists, so that you'll also have a chance to see um, how you can add those different dynamics and how we work with those uh, groups outside of the, the traditional regions. And just the general process for today, uh, you will be meeting with your region to formulate your negotiating strategy. So looking at your briefing sheets that we give you, You'll be discussing what are your vital interests, what is politically feasible in your nation, uh, what do you need from other nations, and what can you offer them in the negotiations. And then once you formulate the strategy, you'll be coming back to the plenary where you'll have to uh, nominate one person from your group to give the brief intervention speech where you outline what those decisions and policies are and why. Later on in the negotiations, we'll actually start to uh, mix you between different groups so that you don't only uh, talk to delegates from your own region, but you can switch into other groups and negotiate with other regions as well. And once you submit your proposals, we will be entering those decisions into the C roads model here. So you'll become more familiar with this model. And what it will do is it will give you immediate feedback on the impacts of those decisions on temperature, global temperature increase. So we're going to get started by breaking you right off into, into different groups. And we're going to be giving you more detailed instructions later on uh, what your goals are and how you might get there. But first we wanted to introduce you to your regional assignment so that you can get more into your role as we go into the simulation. So for today, well, for this breakout room right now, we would like you to first introduce yourself to your group. 
Uh, also skim through your briefing statement. We will ask you to rename yourself so that you can also include your region's name and your title and put your virtual background on if possible. Now this is what you'll be doing in these breakout rooms and I'm going to pass it over to Yasmin, our tech person, <laughs> who will tell you a little bit more about how you can access these materials and any of the other logistics of these breakout rooms, including how we will use the broadcasting feature to get these instructions to you while you're in your breakout rooms. Perfect. So, uh, yesterday when I sent a confirmation email, we also included a Google spreadsheet for you. And I'm going to send that in the uh, chat box as well so that you're able to access it and take a look at the different materials that we have. So, here it is uh, in the chat box. So in this spreadsheet, you'll see the different links to briefing statements, virtual backgrounds, and a proposal form. And once you go into your breakout rooms, you'll see which group you are. So in this photo here on the slide, you see there's something that says breakout room one at the top. So that will have the name of your group. And these are some different features here, which you can use in your breakout room. So mainly there's those two buttons at the bottom that say ask for help and leave breakout room. So ask for help means that I will get a notification and I'll be able to join your room and answer your questions or I might send Carolyn to join your room and answer your questions. Leave breakout room, the button on the right, allows you to leave your breakout room and come into the main plenary. So when everybody is in their breakout rooms, the plenary will just be myself and Carolyn. Uh, so that's another way you can ask us questions is leave the breakout room and we should be there. Um, and that's also how you go back into the main room once, you've call, once we've called you back. And then you'll see that little blue notice at the, be at the top there that says from Climate Interactive to everyone. Uh, so keep an eye out for those little notices that we might send you. So we'll type out the instructions for the breakout room there. We'll also give you some heads up about time. So maybe you have five minutes left, you have one minute left, please prepare this. Um, so that's where you'll have those notices. And those are really the main features you'll need for the breakout room. Uh, and then we have uh, this virtual background that we've talked about a little bit. So in that spreadsheet, you'll have a link to a photo. And if you would like to use it, what you'll do is in the bottom left where you see that start or stop video icon, you can click that little triangle to the neck to the right of it and you'll see that it says choose virtual background and then you can add your photo and it will come up behind you. So for example, when we are doing our role play and Carolyn and I are playing UN officials, my virtual background will look like this. <laughs> so it's a nice way to uh, just know who's on which group and uh, an easy way to identify each other. So that was uh, quite a bit of information here. Uh, we're just making sure everyone gets a bit used to all of the Zoom technicalities and we'll go over them uh, a few more times as we move through the simulation. And you can feel free to ask any questions in the chat. Uh, but for now, uh, we'll just have you all go into your breakout rooms so that you can just get familiar with each other. And so what I'm doing on the, on the host side is opening all the rooms so that you all should get a notification to 
uh, join those rooms uh, right about now. Those watching the recording, we are broadcasting uh, these instructions so that the breakout rooms will get their instructions. And we are also putting our formal wear on and changing our virtual backgrounds so that when the groups come back, we will have started the role play. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go check in on um, a participant from the China group who is okay. asking for help. Okay, great. So I'm gonna call them back. So for those watching the recording, uh, to call people back, the host goes into their breakout room feature and clicks close all rooms. And the way we have it set up is it gives people one minute to leave their breakout rooms and then it automatically closes all of the breakout rooms. So I'm going to click close all rooms now and then we'll have our participants join us in the next minute or so. Welcome back everybody. I am the executive secretary of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. And here to open the summit for us is the Secretary General of the United Nations, Carolyn McCarthy. Welcome, everyone. I'd like us to take a moment to welcome you all to the Conference of Parties for the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. As the Secretary General of the United Nations, I want to start by congratulating you all on the Paris Climate Agreement, which guides us towards achieving the goal of keeping temperature change well below two degrees Celsius. As I look around the room today, I see you all here. And I want you to hold in mind that the decisions that we make today we will feel in the upcoming generations. We will see the consequences of our decisions today in the lives of our children and in our grandchildren. And I ask you for nothing less today than to feel the full weight of your decisions that you make today. What is the planet that you would like to leave for the future? Now your task today is straightforward. In order to avoid dangerous climate change, you must achieve emissions reductions that will stabilize temperature increase to well below two degrees Celsius. And your other goal is to allocate at least $100 billion per year for climate financing for those who need it the most. Let's take a look at this challenge. The Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii, United States has been measuring the concentration of carbon dioxide, CO2, in the atmosphere for over 60 years. This graph shows their measurements from 1955 to 2017. As you can see, there has been a steady increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide to a point where, about a year ago today, we have reached 415 parts per million. Now, when scientists study the historical record of carbon dioxide, they can go back over 650,000 years. And during this time, you can see that there has been some variability in the concentration of CO2, but that it doesn't surpass 300 parts per million until the year 1950. Today, we have passed 415 parts per million and concentrations of CO2 are expected to rise if we don't take immediate action. What we are seeing today is unprecedented. But where does all of this CO2 come from? This graph shows the sources of CO2 from the year 1860 to 2016. You can see that there has been lots of growth in coal 
oil and gas over the past 100 years. Comparatively, land use change emissions, which is primarily from deforestation, has not grown as substantially and may even be declining. But the primary contri contributors to CO2 emissions are the fossil fuels, which you can see in brown, which is coal, oil is in black, and gas is in blue. Now, carbon dioxide is not the only thing that is contributing to climate change. There are also several other greenhouse gases. Here, you see the relative contribution of different gases from the year 1970 to 2010. In orange and red, you can see the contribution that CO2 makes from fossil fuels and land use that we just talked about. Then in light blue is methane, nitrous oxide, and the F gases. Agriculture contributes 50% of global methane emissions and 60% of global nitrous oxide emissions. Heavy industry and manufacturing, as well as consumer goods, are sources of nitrous oxide and the F gases. Now, here what we're looking at is a business as usual scenario. If we do not take action, Temperatures are expected to rise to about 4.5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. Here's a graph of greenhouse gas emissions from the year 2000 projected into the year 2100. Each line represents one of your groups today. So we see at the very top, we, in the dark blue, we have other developing nations, followed close behind by China in light blue. The yellow line represents other developed nations. In the pink, we have the greenhouse gas emissions from India. In red, we have those emissions from the United States. And in green at the bottom, we have those emissions from the European Union. Now, if we do not reduce our fossil fuel use, we could see severe impacts by the end of the century. This includes anything from multimeter sea level rise, the widespread increase in the frequency of drought, intense and frequent heat waves and floods, committed warming for centuries to millennia, long-term equilibrium sea level rise, and other irreversible changes. But what can we do today? Here are your goals for today. Your goals are twofold. First, you must reduce greenhouse gas levels by 2100 at a level that keeps global warming below two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. You must also agree on a deal to share costs of mitigation and adaptation to aid the most vulnerable nations. So your first set of decisions are related to your greenhouse gas emissions. So you have three decisions here. The first decision that you must make is deciding the year that you would like your greenhouse gas emissions in your region to peak. So the year that you would like your emissions to stop growing, that's your first decision. The second year is the year that you must choose for your greenhouse gas emissions to begin to fall. So it must follow that first year that you choose. And your third decision related to emissions is the rate at which you would like your emissions to fall in subsequent years. And you'll represent that by a percentage. Your second set of decisions have to do with forestry and land use. So your first decision here is going to be to prevent deforestation. So you'll have the option to choose a number from zero to 100%, where zero is the choice to continue with your business as usual deforestation path. So that means that you are making no current changes to your deforestation practices in your region. If you choose 100% or anywhere in between, you're gradually preventing deforestation over the coming decades. And it's very similar for afforestation, 0% means that no new area is set aside for afforestation, whereas 100% is the choice to gradually promote afforestation over the coming decades. 
you can think about this as the effort that you would like to put towards deforestation and afforestation efforts. Lastly, your third decision has to do with climate finance. So your goal is to collectively contribute $100 billion per year. And these, this fund will go towards providing aid to vulnerable countries for disaster relief, food and water, immigration and refugees, emissions reductions. So you must decide how much you will contribute to the Green Fund or how much you might need and also, as you go into negotiations, think about if there are any terms or conditions associated with these funds. You will have access to a pro proposal form that looks like this, and you will be able to enter your decisions here. Again, you can see in the second row, all of your decisions related to your emissions, that peak year, the year you would like them to begin to decline, and the rate at which you'd like them to decline, your two decisions for deforestation and afforestation, and then finally, what you would like to contribute or request from the Green, Green Climate Fund. When you go into your breakout rooms, you will create your proposal. You will work on this decision together with other members of your delegation. Remember that when you're in this group, you must elect one person to represent your nation for a two minute plenary speech where you will be describing your decisions and also why you're making those decisions. And now Yasmin will share some details about how we might move into those groups. Thank you, Secretary General. So we'll have about 15 to 20 minutes to craft your proposals. And when we come back, uh, we'll share some of those details about how each group can present and then we will be entering those into uh, our simulation model to take a look at the impacts of your proposals. So you should be getting a notification to go ahead and enter your breakout rooms. Thank you delegates. So let me send a broadcast message. Should we say 15 minutes yeah. and then give them a little bit extra? Yeah. So, yeah. At the hour, I'm guessing it's for everybody. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. I hope that you were all able to come to agreements amongst your delegation and are looking forward to proposing some strong targets. So we're going to have one delegate from each group present to our plenary the details of their proposal. So for the Zoom technical side of that, what that looks like is once I call on your group, the representative will use that raise hand feature under the participants button and that will let me know that you are the representative and I will go ahead and unmute you. If you're having trouble with the raise hand feature, just type into the chat that you're the representative and I will also go ahead and unmute you. So let's get started with our presentations. If we could start with uh, the representative from the United States. Okay, so Amanda, I see you. You are unmuted. Okay, so um, first, I've never done this before. <laughs> so do I just, do I give you my numbers or do I just do a two minute summary? So you're gonna give us our, your numbers and also your priorities as the United States. Okay, um, so the United States has decided that our emissions peak year will be in 2070. Um, and at that point, we will not be reducing um, our, our, we won't be re doing reductions. 
Um, so we have a plan of an annual reduction rate of 0%. And um, we will not be preventing deforestation because we export um, a lot of our wood to um, other countries for coal processing. And that is a big, um, affects our GDP quite a bit. And we will contribute 1% to afforestation and are making a pledge for contribution to the global fund of 50 million and not requesting money from the global fund at this time. Um, we believe that our emissions uh, are lower comparatively to the rest of the global, um, yes, rest globally. <laughs> um, and so that is, that is how we feel. Thank you, United States. Next, if we could hear from the representative from the European Union. Okay, representative, you should be unmuted. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to start by saying uh, thank you to all the other countries and groups, especially the, especially the United States for showing up to uh, attend this summit and participate in these negotiations. It's good to see you at the table at the very least, even if your pledges are somewhat um, less than we had originally hoped. In the EU, um, we, have, we are coming from a position of strength in our attempts to tackle global, global climate change. So as such, we have put some fairly ambitious targets on our uh, greenhouse gas emission reductions. So our greenhouse gas, gas emissions have already peaked and as such, we are formally saying the peak year will be 2020 and our emissions are already reducing. So we are putting our reduction rate at 2020 as well, our emissions start year um, at 2020. And we had originally pledged to reduce our emissions by 40% by the year 2030 from 1990 levels, which is a rate of 4% per year. However, we are seeking to increase this to 5% per year to demonstrate leadership in this area. One of the ways to do this is through preventing deforestation. And although forestry is a significant part of some of the economies in the EU, um, we believe that through proper management, we can increase our deforestation rate to 100%. And our afforestation efforts to re-green previously deforested areas urban centers and other developments, um, we would like to put 100% as our afforestation effort as well. We understand that globally, there are many countries that will be struggling to make the transition from uh, fossil fuel dependent economies to ones that are more um, based on renewable energies and that many countries are unable to financially fund their own transitions. Also, there are some smaller countries um, for example, Polynesia, that do not have things such as geographic space, land to expand to or migrate to in the event of catastrophic sea level rise. And as well, some of the concerns of the European Union public citizens are global instability, um, insecurity, and uh, mass migration. So as such, we are pledging $15 billion to the Global Fund to help these other economies um, transition in a safe and sustainable way for a better future for everybody. So we hope other countries and other groups will take this as a way to join us and uh, move forward to a better future and we can all lead by example. Thank you. Great, thank you European Union. I see we have some pretty heated discussion happening over in the chat with our climate activists and our representatives from the United States. So I would ask you to please stay cordial with one another and uh, continue to strive for stronger action. So next, hearing from our other developed countries. So the representative from the other developed group. Perfect, Jim, go ahead. Good afternoon and uh, um, well, I'm pleased to be here at the United Nations Summit representing 
a, a range of countries, um, amongst them Canada, Australia, Russia, Japan, South Korea. We're a diverse group of nations and we have a wide range of, of economies and, and, and economic needs. Um, however, it's worth noting that, you know, um, our countries have a, a, a rich history and a strong economic um, uh, incentive in, in the fossil fuels area. Canada uh, with their um, oil production, Russia with oil and natural gas, and, and, and Australia with its coal. Uh, our economies are fueled by fossil fuels. Having said that, we have felt keenly felt um, some of the increasing effects of climate change and and, and the catastrophic wildfires in Australia in this past summer have really put us on notice. Um, so we're, we're responding uh, ambitiously, unlike some of our, our fellow delegates at this, at this UN summit. Um, our ambition, um, we're, we're in, uh, we've pushed our, uh, uh, the date for leveling off our carbon emissions to 2025. Uh, we're, we're aiming to begin reduction of our carbon dioxide emissions and other greenhouse gas emissions by 2040 at a rate of 2%. Um, considering the economic basis of, these, of, of the countries in, in this group, this is, this is an ambitious target. Um, we've also uh, agreed to uh, encourage afforestation at a rate of 10% and decre de decrease deforestation at a rate of 10%. Um, these factors are less important for our nations than in some areas of the world where uh, afforestation and reforestation are of significant concern. Um, and finally, our, our most ambitious change is we have decided to significantly increase our, our contributions to the Green Climate Fund. And this is simply because um, as uh, expenditures for the recent COVID and, and ongoing COVID pandemic have shown us, uh, when there is a will, um, money can be found uh, to, to meet challenges. And so we are dedicating $20 billion per year between us uh, to the Green Climate Fund of the United Nations. We encourage our fellow delegates to also respond with ambition uh, as the European Union has done uh, and, and, and meet this uh, challenge with some seriousness. Thank you very much, delegate. Next, if we could hear from the representative of the China delegation. Perfect. Delegate, you should be unmuted. Hi. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming together to work on a problem not that each individual country has, but as a whole, as a global economy, as a global, um, we have one Earth, so we all live on the same Earth. Um, I'll give you the numbers first, and then uh, I will explain to you our team decision and how we came up with those numbers. So for our emission peak year, we have put down as 2030, one of the reason because that was one of the China um, pledge back that said they will start um, basic taper down the emission peak and then the night peak at 2030. And I also believe US during the Paris um, pledge, you said you were supposed to taper down by 2025. Um, for emission reduction start year, um, normally when you have a peak year, it does not start decreasing immediately. So we're giving about a year plateau. Um, so the re reduction for emissions will start 2031. The annual reduction rate is about 3%. And um, because they did say, even with the scientists, that 3.5% is quite ambitious. So we actually put a 3%. That's a pretty high goal for us. Um, prevention of cutting trees down, we're down to put on 30%. But we are putting effort to replant trees of 50%. And we are requesting $50 billion from the Global Fund to help. So for the reasoning behind our decisions, um, one of the reasons, yes, I think some of you guys put in chat said, um, a lot of developed countries numbers are reducing, that is correct, but every country goes through the progress. If you go back to the 60s, 70s, think about what those countries went through, how bad the pollution was. Um, so just because you're not experiencing this now, doesn't mean it wasn't there before. 
the developing country is a process, it's a human progress, and sometimes that happens, we make bad things of the environment. This whole summit is come together to find the solutions to ensure an increase in, in you know, life um, living standards for all countries while helping our environment to reduce our damage we're making to the environment. If you look at the GDP per person, okay, even with China, China does not have the largest GDP per person. But if you also look at the emissions per person in 2013, even though um, some of she said China has made the 40% emission rate, but per person wise is only 7.4. And US actually has the largest back in 2013. I realized that's about seven years ago. Um, we are requesting a lot of funding for help because we can't do this alone. And another um, really great point my um, roommate brought up is a lot of countries or developed countries say, well, we are not making those um, damaging environment. We're not making so much emission. But one of the reasons because you're not producing as much, you're importing a lot of product from China. A lot of those emission, a lot of those environmental harm are coming from production. So if you're depending on China to produce product for your people to consume, that's where the environment harm come from. You're gonna to have to help us to get under control. So I guess another way to put it, look at, look at this. If you stop import product from China, that will reduce Chinese production. It's not good for China's economy, but I'm pretty sure that also have a big effect on how environment is being affected by China as well. Now take those production back to your country. Think of that way. Think if that's gonna change some of those environmental factors in your country. So that's how we came up with our numbers. Um, China's willing to do what we can do, but we need help. We can't do this alone. Thank you, delegate. Now for uh, the representative of the India delegation. If the representative from the India delegation could raise their hand or put in their name into the chat. Okay, Christina, you. Okay, delegate, you should be unmuted. Hello, everyone. Um, obviously, as the delegate to, uh, from India, we have uh, one of the smallest per capita emissions rates in the world. Uh, we are still a developing nation. We have an incredible um, level of poverty, and that's our primary concern. It's not that our country doesn't care about climate change. It does. We we do see the effects of it. But when when my people you know can't put food on their table, um, can't clothe their children, um, that's a priority. So while climate change is is important to us getting our our population above the poverty line is really a critical factor um, and honestly considering the fact that the developing countries have largely contributed to this problem India doesn't necessarily feel that it needs to be the one to solve the problem caused by these other developed countries so while it's important to us it is um, not our number one priority to reduce uh, emissions and to address climate change before we can address the poverty issues within our own country. So to get to the numbers, what we're proposing initially um, is that uh, we would, we're proposing a, um, a, a greenhouse gas emission uh, peak point at 2050. And we understand that this is a little pushed out from the 2030 that was initially agreed to in 2015. Um, but poverty has gotten worse, not better, and other countries, um, you know, I won't name names, but other countries have not made their commitments either, um, and countries that have a much higher standard of living right now than India does. Um, so we, uh, we expect that those emissions will start to fall in 2050, and, but that is based on the input of, of resources and finances from countries who have done more of the causing of the climate change. 
but um, who have those resources to help us transfer our largely coal-based energy production into more green energy production and to protect the jobs and, and, um, and the influx and the economy in the meantime. Uh, we're proposing a, a, a pretty aggressive, I think for us, for our, our, our economic status of 1.5% uh, per year reduction after that. Um, and again, that is based on getting the outside support that we need uh, to shore up our economy and to make those transfers from um, fossil fuels, from coal to, uh, to more green energies. Uh, we are not proposing any deforestation uh, change. Uh, quite frankly, we can't afford it. Uh, although we do see the value um, in that carbon sink and we do know that it's important. So we'll pro we're proposing a 5% afforestation rate. And again, that is subject to receiving the support that we need outside um, uh, to, to create the jobs to do that and the materials and resources to do that afforestation. Um, we are asking, um, again, you know, I, I reiterate that we are being asked as a large country, um, but with a very low per capita emissions rate to make um, a significant change in our lifestyle while our, our country is struggling economically. We are asking for $30 billion from the $100 billion fund to help shore up our economy and create those clean energy transitions from coal um, to greener energy to help meet uh, the worldwide need for climate change that you know um, did not actually originate from India, but we are willing to participate in um, helping the problem for the you know for the future. Great, thank you very much, India. And for our final uh, official delegation party, if we could hear from the other developing. Hi. Um, good morning, fellow delegates from the United States, European, European Union, India, China, and other developed countries around the globe. We represent other developing nations, more specifically the African Union. We are humbled by the opportunity to speak and convene with such an esteemed group. From our perspective, we understand the effects of climate change firsthand, and we completely support any and all efforts to lower carbon emissions. However, we want what is best for the people of our nations, and based on our calculations, it is simply not to pour money into the climate fund. Our people are impoverished, at war, and in terrible conditions. Based on this, we do not expect it to be realistic to make it a priority to limit emissions. However, we will, if we can, throughout the course of today's negotiations. Our emissions peak year is 2030. Our reductions will begin um, year in the year 2100 by 1%. We will support the work of Nobel, Peace, um, Nobel Prize winner, renowned Kenyan social, environmental, and political activist, Professor Matai, and reduce deforestation by 50%. We can sadly only promote afforestation by 10%, and this is subject to the monetary support we receive from other countries to promote such programs and we are requesting $75 billion from the fund to help support our initiatives, economies, and people. Thank you, delegate. So we have heard our official proposals and we've been noticing around the summit that some of our activist groups and our fossil fuel lobbyist groups have had a pretty loud voice and are engaging with the delegations very actively. So we would like to give them a space now to share to the entire plenary. So if we could hear from our fossil fuel lobbyists, you have the floor. Right. Stacy, you should be unmuted. Hello everyone. 
Uh, we thank our delegates for letting us have a, a seat at the table here. Um, I just want to state that, you know, although uh, many of the delegates here seem to be relying on the fact that renewables, renewable energy sources um, are going to help you in the long run, the fact of the matter is, is we're not there yet. They do not have the capacity to give you the energy to meet the energy demands of our developed world. Our energy infrastructure relies on the fossil fuel industry. We have the pipelines, we have the electricity grids. They're all put in place already. To transition away from that um, would be a very difficult um, process and would cause um, some economic disruption, which is really what we don't need right now in these uncertain times with this fragile world economy. Um, so that's just something uh, to consider. But I will say that um, as a representative of the fossil fuel industry, we have been putting um, some of our investments in renewable energies. We've also uh, promoted afforestation um, as a way to mitigate some of the costs without going backwards um, with our growth in divesting in fossil fuel industries. Um, we've also input efficiency programs um, really to highlight um, for lower income families to highlight some of this um, inequity um, that is there. And so what I'll say to, in, in terms of equity, what I'll say to the developed countries is that, like I said before, uh, renewables just cannot meet your energy demand at this moment. Um, and the reason that you are developed and leaders and superpowers in the world is due in part to the fossil fuel industry. So remember why you're here. And then to my developing world, the delegates from, from the developing world, I will say, um, do you think it's fair or equitable that the people who got here from fossil fuel industries are denying you that right? Don't you want your citizens to have electricity? Don't you want them to prosper? We have reserves ready for you. We can put in that infrastructure. So we're here to listen to your needs um, and we can help you. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. And finally, if we could hear from our climate activists. Great, you should be unmuted. Good morning, delegates. We're here to do one thing and one thing only. It's to save our environment for future generations and for people around the world. We cannot continue to do business as usual. Uh, as our lobbyists from the fuel industry just stated, infrastructure, infrastructure change is gonna have to happen no, no matter what we do. So let's invest in infrastructure that will protect our environment, that will um, give us clean air and clean water, that will provide opportunities for all generations in the future and for people around the world. Um, and I wanna remind everybody that this is an invest, a global investment and it uh, requires money to do this. And the developing nations don't have the money to do it. So we have to collectively decide on the future that we want for our children and our grandchildren. We have to make those investments. We have to commit to it. We have to change our lifestyles, but that's okay because we have historically, the countries that succeed are the ones that innovate. And we need to innovate now away from uh, infrastructure that served us well in the past, but is not going to serve us well into the future. Um, so I would encourage all of the delegates to do the most you can do, make the biggest changes you can make as quickly as you can make it. And for those of you that have the resources, commit to helping your global brothers and sisters around the world uh, and making a bright future for their children and grandchildren as well. Thank you very much. Now we'll have the opportunity to enter in these official proposals into a simulation model so that we can see what the impacts are of your proposals and if we are on the right track to reaching our climate goals. So here we have our Sea roads model. 
and we'll be entering in the pledges from the different delegations. So starting with the United States, they would like to peak their emissions in the year 2070. So looking at the red line here, we start to see that peak just slightly. Uh, doesn't have a, a big impact on temperature because the peak year is quite far out into the future. And they would like to keep everything else business as usual. Uh, so no adjustments to these other pledges here. Uh, and then they're contributing $50 million. The European Union, they've already peaked their emissions. So here we're entering in 2020 and they'd like to start reducing those emissions in 2020 as well with a 5% reduction rate, which is quite ambitious. We see those energy CO2 emissions start to fall to zero uh, pretty near in the future, which is great. Uh, we see a slight decrease in temperature here at four degrees Celsius. And for the afforestation and deforestation efforts, they'd like to put in the maximum efforts here and really giving us one of the most ambitious pledges uh, that we've seen in this summit so far. Other developed countries have pledged to peak their emissions by the year 2025. We start to see that yellow line decreasing here. They'd like to reduce in 2040 at a rate of 2%. So again, we're seeing that yellow line decrease and emissions reaching quite low by the year 2100. And for their afforestation efforts and their deforestation efforts, they'd like to uh, contribute about a 10% effort. So we start seeing that uh, temperature numbers start moving lower to a 3.8 degree temperature increase. China, uh, choosing to peak their emissions in the year 2030. So looking at that light blue line. So we see a really big shift here of the projection of these emissions. And they want to start reducing pretty quickly after they've peaked. So in the year 2031 at a reduction rate of 3%. So we see the big fall in emissions in China so commending China for that strong proposal that has led us to a 3.3 degree increase. And then with their forestry commitments, they've pledged a 50% effort in both afforestation and deforestation. India wanting to peak and start reducing in the year 2050 at a rate of 1.5%. Again, we're seeing that pink line start taking a fall, which is great to see. And they're not able to commit a deforestation effort, but they are able to commit 5% in afforestation efforts. Executive Secretary Yasmin? Yes. So there is some conversation in the forum currently. The United States would like to draw attention to themselves and note that they do have a 1% afforestation effort that they would like to be included in their proposal. Also, India wanted to clarify, thank you for that. India would like to clarify that their emissions peak year would be the year 2040 and that the reductions year would begin in 2050. Perfect. Thank you for that clarification, Secretary General. So United States, with your 1% afforestation effort, we don't see a change happening here in temperature. And India starting to peak at 2040 we do see that line change uh, a little bit. So thank you for that. And then finally with other developing, we are seeing their emissions peak year 2030 
So we see that blue line drop quite significantly and that's reached a 2.8 degree temperature change. Uh, so we're making some great progress here. So the other developing nations have chosen to start reductions in 2100 and start reducing at 1%. Although because this model only projects to 2100, we aren't able to see the impacts of your reductions past 2100. So for now that temperature stays the same. And then for their afforestation and deforestation efforts, I see that they are preventing their deforestation by 50%, which is a great start here for the other developing nations who have uh, the highest rate of deforestation out of these groups. And then for the afforestation effort, I see we are at a 10% effort here. So taking a look at these proposals, uh, in this first round, we've reached 2.8 degrees, which is uh, a very commendable start. We have some money being contributed to the fund, although we have about $120 billion still missing from this fund uh, from the number of groups that have requested this money and these contributions for them to be able to fulfill these pledges. So we are really pushing and encouraging groups that are able to contribute to the fund to continue doing so. And we really would like to see some stronger targets here. 2.8 is a good start, but it's not good enough and it's not what we are advocating for and aiming for. We are still seeing at a 2.8 degree temperature increase, we're still seeing small island nations being losing their homes. We're still seeing uh, a lot of other developing nations being forced even deeper into poverty because of the climate impacts that they will face. So I really urge you all to put forward stronger targets in this next round and work on really financing some of this progress so that we can all be part of a safer and better world. So in this second round of negotiations, what we're going to do is give you all the opportunity to negotiate with each other. This is especially important for our fossil fuel lobbyists and our climate activists who cannot put specific official pledges forward, but can advocate for their priorities with other groups. So in the second round, we'll go into our breakout rooms, you'll be with your team, you'll check in, you'll see how you are reacting to some of the group's proposals. And we really encourage you to go and negotiate with other teams. So Again, bringing us back to this slide, if one or two of you want to go negotiate, you will leave your breakout room. So that button on your bottom right panel, once you're in your breakout room, and then that will bring you into the main room and you can let myself or the secretary general know which group you'd like to go negotiate with and we will send you into that group. So we really encourage you to go and negotiate with others and advocate for stronger targets here. And in addition to negotiating with other groups, we also have uh, a couple different resources that we're now able to offer you that we hope will help you create some of these stronger targets. So first, we're able to share with you all our summary of all of the proposals that have been pledged up to now so that you can see what the different groups have pledged and you can really advocate for certain groups to put forward more strong targets and we've also leaked with you all our simulation model that we use so we're giving you all access to this model and the ability to test for yourselves the impacts of your own pledges and the impacts of other groups pledges so that you can really 
experience and understand where stronger action is needed. So with all of this new information and this push to put forward stronger targets, uh, we will enter now into our second round of negotiations and we will be giving you about 20 minutes or so and really encourage you to take these negotiations seriously. So we will see you all soon uh, and good luck. Hello there, delegate from fossil fuel lobbyists. <laughs> Hi, um, can you send me into the, um, the, to the India delegation? I have a few things to talk with them about. Absolutely. Thank you. So you should be moved now. So if you go to that breakout room button on your bottom panel and join again, it should take you to the India group. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. Hi, Stacy. Hello. Um, I would like to visit America. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you should be all set. So if you go back into that breakout room button, it should send you to the US group. All right. Hi, Julia. Yes, yes, I'm supposed to go to the climate activists, ma'am. All right, let's get you in there. Thank you. We have a couple of the climate activists coming out to negotiate. So if you enter into an empty room, pop back out and I'll see if I can find you some climate activists to negotiate with. I see we've got Catherine and Dina here. I would like to go to the USA. Okay, do you have someone in your group who can uh, accept uh, Julia from the fossil fuel group? No, uh, our third person has to go teach a class. So it's just the two of us now. Okay, and we're both I can going just elsewhere. Stay. I'll just stay with you, Ms. Yavs. Okay, great. And then we'll see if we get anyone else. Okay, so we have Catherine and Dina from the climate activists. Okay, so where am I sending you both? I, I would like to go to China and Dina would like to go to the US. Perfect. Okay, so you should be moved. So if you go into that breakout room button again and you join, it should take you to the China or the US groups. Okay, we have another delegate from the fossil fuel group. Hello. I would like to go to the other developing countries. All right. Okay. You should be in other developing now. If you go into the breakout room button, you should see other developing. Yeah. And we have many members from the other developing nations here right now to request to speak with other groups too. Perfect. So let me go down this list here. I see uh, Kim. Yes, I'd Where? like to go to other developed, please. Other developed. Okay. All right, Kim, you should be all set. If you just click on your breakout room button, that should take you there. Join breakout room, okay. Perfect. And then I see someone whose name is other developing. Hi, yeah, I think we're all in this chat right now. So if you wanted to send me back to our normal room to negotiate with whoever you send there, I can. Sure, that would be great. So all you have to do then is just go back to that breakout room button and then join and it should take you back to your original group. Where's the breakout room button? It should be on your bottom panel, maybe under more. Sorry. No worries, let me know if you 
breakout rooms. Oh, okay. Perfect. And then we have Chris here. Chris, yeah. what you? go to China, please. Perfect. All right, Chris, you're all set. Hi, Kim. Hi, um, I had a very productive um, conversation with the other developed people. Uh, we have a plan and I'm ready to go back to my group of other developing. Perfect. Right. And I think in just a few moments, we'll be coming back to the plenary session for the second round of negotiations. I think so too. So Kim, you should be all set if you just go back to that same breakout room button. Okay. Florian, USA delegate, where can I send you? Back, back to, to my delegation, please. Right. Thank you, Secretary General. Miss Secretary General. No problem. Okay, should be all set to go back into the USA. Team. Great, thank you. No problem. Okay, I see a few other people. If you want to write in the chat uh, which group you'd like to go into, I can try to get everybody back into their groups. Hi everybody. If you can just write into the chat which group you'd like to go back into, I can send everybody where they'd like to go. Okay. Delegate Rachel Willis, your enthusiasm is potent. So if you just arrived in this space, you can write into the chat box the place that you would like to go to, whichever nation or region. And we will also be very shortly coming back into the plenary session. So if you feel that you've been successful in your negotiations, then you can hang out right here and we'll be bringing everybody back. Okay, I think I've got everybody set up. So if you go into your breakout room button again and then click join it should send you into the breakout room that you would like to visit if there's any issue just leave the breakout room and come back here and we'll set you up and as the secretary general mentioned we'll be wrapping up shortly so please negotiate quickly and then head back to your original groups Hi all, for those joining the main plenary, please just write into your group, uh, into the chat, which group you'd like to join, although we are wrapping up this round pretty soon. So uh, we'd prefer that you go back into your original groups. So Dina, you can head back to your group if you'd like. Let me send you back. Okay, Dina, uh, you're back in the climate activist group. Stacy. Stacy, you're back. Meg, you are back in India now. So you just have to click that breakout rooms button and it should send you back there. 
I see uh, Catherine. Catherine, can you write in the chat which uh, group you'd like to go back to? Yep. All right, Catherine, you're all set. Hey, Jim, I'm going to send you back to other developed. Thank you. No problem. We'll see if I've made any progress. I don't know. Yeah. We got a couple of stuff not to crack. I know. Um, okay, you should be all set to head back Thanks. into develop. No problem. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you had uh, many fruitful negotiations and conversations. And I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, some of these stronger pledges that we're planning to put forward, as well as uh, hopefully some stronger uh, funding commitments that we can have all of our delegations uh, best equipped to fulfill their own proposals. So we're going to run through everybody's proposals one more time, uh, these new ones. Uh, and this time we're going to be a little bit quicker with it. So if you could just give us your new proposals so that we can take the time to hear from everybody uh, and then put those into the model to see the kind of progress we've made. So moving a little bit quickly here, uh, United States, uh, if we can hear from your group, uh, some of your new proposals. So you can either raise your hand or write to us in the chat. Still waiting for a US delegate. Okay. Go ahead, delegate. Um, thank you very much, uh, Madam Secretary. And um, I um, we've gone back and um, had some discussions and so our new our new proposal from the united states is that we will um start our reduction of um uh, in the year 2080 and um we've decided that due to um we feel that there is a lot of corruption in um and a lot of countries where a lot of the funding goes to uh, for the climate change and that the, um, the the funding just ends up being taken by the fat cats at the top and so we've decided that we are not going to contribute to the uh, to the fund um, at all so we'll be moving our 50 million dollar contribution and thank you delegates Delegate, do you have an annual reduction rate that you would like to name beginning for the year 2080? Uh, no, we feel that we will have to wait and, um, and see how, the, how our economy is doing. Um, it is a commitment to start working on it, but I don't want to make that kind of commitment quite yet because I don't, um, I mean, we can't foresee the future really. You'll wait and see. Yes. Thank you, Delegate. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the question. All right, uh, off to a little bit of a disappointing start, but let's hear from uh, the European Union. All right, go ahead, delegate. Hi, thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, so we've been running our model on the side, looking at how any in increases in our own emission reductions would affect global temperature change and we've realized we are already at the sort of maximum amount that has any sort of tangible benefit increasing our emissions at a faster rate or any sooner is not really possible and doesn't have any sort of tangible effect so our best road forward is to support the countries and blocks that actually can have some tangible effect on the climate so with that we've had some negotiations with two of the largest future emitting blocks uh, china and the other developing countries 
um, negotiations, negotiations with China were contingent on what the US was proposing from the second round. So I feel like our negotiations with them will now move forwards, um, seeing the disappointing result from the US. Um, otherwise, we've proposed contributing an additional $50 billion directly to the developing nations, to the other developing nations, um, contingent on them moving their emissions reductions forward to a sooner year and at a increased rate. However, what they are able to actually offer, uh, we have not had a chance to discuss with them. So I can't give concrete numbers for them to change until they talk. But uh, yes, yeah, so we're gonna support with more money to them. And we, I give you that number we're offering for China. We are offering 25 billion um, directly to China as well. But we'll see what happens in the next round, I guess. So uh, thank you for your time and we'll see what, what happens. Perfect, thank you very much EU. This is great news. We're hoping that with these financial contributions, we can start seeing uh, stronger actions, especially from China and the other developing nations. So next, let's hear from the other developed nations. Jim, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you, uh, fellow delegates. Um, I will start with the, the positive. Um, we were frankly uh, inspired by the commitments of China in the first round of negotiation, and we have chosen to accelerate uh, our uh, emission reduction state to 2035 and to make our reductions more ambitious by th to a total of 3%. Um, additionally, uh, as much as the delegate from the EU has recently discussed, uh, we are willing to also increase our, uh, um, our green climate fund um, uh, contributions. Uh, we don't have quite the economic war with all of the EU as, as resource extraction de uh, dependent nations. So we'll be increasing to $30 billion. But as the delegate from the EU said, that will be contingent on, uh, on a condition that uh, the developing nations uh, begin their uh, uh, emissions decrease by the year 2050. I would also like to comment that um, I'm deeply disappointed in the delegation from the United States. I thought we had some productive conversations about their own contributions to the Green Climate Fund, and I'm, I'm deeply disappointed that they've not followed up uh, in, in light of those conversations. Um, thank you, delegates. Thank you, Jim. Uh, next, hearing from China. Go ahead, delegate. Hey, um, first of all, I, we as China worked with uh, developing countries, developed countries, as well as European Union. And uh, it was a pleasure to work with everybody. Uh, we were, um, we all have to care about our own country, the people in our own country, but we were able to work together, not just about our own people in our own countries, but also about the world as a whole. So here is our new numbers. Um, we are, willing to start, well, you know, instead of mission peak 2030, we're gonna um, try to overuse some of the funding. We're new on mission and peak year is gonna be 2025. And then emission reduction will start in 2028. And the annual rate will stay at 3%. We are dropping our request to $13 billion because uh, EU and developed countries are waiting to help us, give us direct funds. And we're still requesting money for a reason. We also work with developing countries as well. And we have come to a agreement where we will help. So some of the money we're requesting along with the funding from European Union um, and developed countries are not just going to China. It's gonna to go to China as well as China helping developing country with infrastructures to help with their building their economy because we felt rather than uh, developing country, you know, request a large fund, funding um, to do a ground up work. We have the technology, we have um, 
the infrastructure we learned you know the lessons so in, that's more cost effective i think for everybody for china to help developing country um, with their um, infrastructures we don't know what's going to be um whether it's going to be fossil or renewable energy wind wave um, solar because technology developing literally on a daily basis uh, we're pledged to help we just don't know the details and what you know forms yet and then we are keeping the difference in 30 but we are willing to put 100 percent effort in a station. so we're trying you know get more chased up and stuff like that Thank you, Delegate. I'm happy to see some stronger targets being put forward. Next, if we could hear from Team India, if the representative can raise their hand or name themselves in the chat. Christina, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Secretary. And thank you all delegates for your representations here. Um, we, we rediscussed our contributions and our requests. We had a few conversations with some other delegates, some which were very interesting. Some um, wanted to play golf with us and offer us clean call, which is kind of mind blowing. Um, I'm not really sure what clean coal is. Uh, so we have discussed and, um, you know, while we are a developing nation and while poverty is obviously has to be my highest concern for people, we are part of a global community and we do want to, to help in the ways that we can towards climate. So um, while financially we need the money that we have requested and that's not going to change, we do believe that with help we can reduce some of the um, the emission, we can drop the emission stop growing year and the decline year. So we'd like to drop those from 2040 to 2035 and the emissions start declining year from 2050 to 2045. Um, our annual rate of decline uh, does need to be the same um, at, at our economic level. That's already relatively aggressive. Um, and we are still requesting the 30 billion, which we think is reasonable considering the sheer capita, uh, you know, the, the, the population that we have. Um, and we are also keeping our deforestation and afforestation goals the same. Um, we, we did, um, uh, I, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought for a moment. Um, we did, uh, kind of in good faith want to show that we do want to participate and we're not trying to be difficult in that because there is so much history and i believe that the delegate from the develop, developing nations mentioned this as well there's been so much difficulty in allocating funds to appropriate places once they've been given that we will submit to un oversight of the 30 billion that we're asking for to ensure that it really does go towards um uh, switching our coal and our fossil fuel dependent growth right now to a clean energy growth. And we will commit to that oversight, um, obviously along with, you know, our, our own participation in that oversight, but we'd, um, we will commit to that oversight as part of um, our commitments to this, this delegation. Great. Thank you, India. Uh, and finally, from our negotiating parties, if we could hear from the other developing nations. Delegate, go. Uh, thank you, delegates, for taking time to discuss our goals and considering us and our people in your negotiations. Um, based on your generosity, we are able to make some modifications to our initial proposals. And with what little we have, we're willing to make some positive change to support the initiative. So our peak emissions um, is going to stay the same at the year 2030 but we will start reducing our emissions in the year 2050. 
um, and we will reduce them for, um, by 2%, which is up from our previous 1%. We are keeping deforestation the same at 50% because we feel like that was generous and ambitious. Um, afforestation, to um, promote afforestation, we are keeping that the same at 10%. And based on our negotiations, we've lowered our request from the fund from 75 billion to 55 billion. Again, we thank you for considering us, most of you guys, in your conversations and bringing us to the table. Thank you, Delegate. Uh, it's great to hear that we're seeing some of these stronger pledges being put forward and some funding to back that up. Uh, I would like to give the floor once again to some of our uh, additional groups here that we have at the summit uh, for any final insights that they might have. So uh, fossil fuel lobbyists, if you'd like to share any new thoughts that you have. Stacy, you can go ahead. Hello, well, thank you uh, again. Um, I just wanna say to the developing nations, you know, we're here for you. We have uh, resources to, you know, lift you up um, and to, you know, help bring your citizens out of poverty and give them the opportunities to grow and to prosper. And I know that uh, some of you had brought up um, a question of how are we gonna keep our energy um, cheap? Um, and I will say we are anticipating a wealth of reserves to open up um, as the Arctic does open up. And I'm curious, as um, some of the other developed nations um, and the EU um, put in some bold proposals to you know, reduce uh, their emissions, I'm wondering if they're willing to also forsake their claims um, in the Arctic, um, because I do know some other nation groups that would be happy um, to, to go in there and, and lay claim to those reserves and to all of that revenue that they bring in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stacy. And finally, hearing from our climate activists who have joined us today. So Catherine, you can go ahead. Thank you, everybody, for allowing us to play a role in your negotiations. I want to especially thank China for being receptive to our discussions regarding equity versus equality. And I would strongly suggest that all countries uh, approach the fossil fuel industry with suspicion and also look at the realities of the global economy now with COVID-19. Fossil fuels are not a safe bet for the future. They are a way of the past. And if you wanna move forward to better your individual people and your economies and sustainability, I would strongly encourage you to invest in sustainable markets for your future. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you everybody for uh, submitting some strong pledges here today. Uh, we're going to take a look at this improvement that we've hopefully made from this new round of proposals. So we're going to take a look now back to our model here. So starting with the United States, we see that they have chosen to start reductions by 2080 but with no reduction rate yet set, we aren't able to see the progress that that is going to make. So not a lot of change that we're seeing from the United States with their pledges here. Uh, and additionally, they have taken all of their contributions to the fund away. Um, uh, luckily, unfortunately, we have some new contributions to this fund, which has been great to see. Uh, the European Union has contributed uh, significant amounts of funding for China and for the other developing nations while keeping their pledge the same. And uh, thanks to a lot of that funding, we're seeing some stronger pledges put forward by other groups. So other developed uh, is looking to start their reductions uh, a little bit earlier in 2035 with an increased annual reduction rate of 3%. So that's great to see. We see a slight decrease here in uh, temperature change. And again, offering to contribute 
uh, $30 billion to other developing nations. Uh, so really happy to see this uh, funding support for uh, some of these uh, more vulnerable nations uh, who we really need to uh, be a part of the climate solution. Next, we have China. Uh, we did see some improvements from the China group. So we see them peaking their emissions at 2025. So we see that light blue line start to decrease. We see 2028 for those reductions to start, uh, keeping their reduction rate the same. So we see some temperature change here as well. And we see the increase in afforestation to 100% and their deforestation down to 30%. And so we see some of those small changes being made to temperature, uh, having us right now to a 2.7 degree temperature increase. So next, moving over to India, we also see some stronger targets here. We see emissions peak year at 2035. So watching that pink line shift a little bit. 2045 with the reduction start year, keeping their reduction rate the same and keeping their deforestation and afforestation efforts uh, also the same as their previous proposal. And finally, we have our other developing nations. So we saw a lot of contributions directly to the other developing nations. And so we've been seeing some strong targets being put forward from them, which is great. They have pledged to, in, to make their reduction start year uh, 50 years earlier. So now we're at 2050 with their reductions and at a reduction rate of 2%. So we see that line start decreasing as well, which has gotten us to 2.5 degrees and keeping their forestry pledges the same. So we saw some increase in effort here uh, by many groups, uh, some prioritizing funding, others prioritizing stronger pledges. And so reaching 2.5 degrees, uh, I will hand it over to the Secretary General, uh, Carolyn McCarthy, who will close our summit for us. Thank you, Executive Secretary. I would like to note, and I did see it, some conversation in the chat that it is possible for there to be other leadership from the United States besides at the federal level uh, and so while we can take a look at that 2.5 degrees temperature change, we can imagine what could occur if individual states step up to leadership positions. Um, delegates, in planning this summit, I had one overriding objective that this summit had to be a summit of action plans and not platitudes. Thank you for delivering on that. You understand that the climate emergency is the fight of our lives as well as the fight for our lives. I was deeply moved by the many examples from developing nations to and of their leadership for doing the most that they could to reduce their emissions. And I also want to salute those countries who have increased their climate finance support. While there still is a lot of work to be done, I am honored here to stand in your presence and wish you all the best of courage in your work from here on into the future. Thank you for your work today. So we are now finished with the role playing simulation itself. So we are going to take a moment, yeah, and we can also just celebrate the, the action that we've made in the model, celebrate all of your, um, your acting skills, the chat box is getting fired up over there. This was a really wonderful um, run through. Um, 
because we have been here for a couple hours, let's take a moment before we move into the actual debrief. We can, we can take off the blazers, step out of your roles and step back into your, your own roles and um, take away your um, virtual backgrounds if you'd like. And when we come back, we'll move into the actual debrief. So let's come back together at, um, yeah, at about four to five minutes and we'll get started with your with the debrief. So go ahead, take, take a moment to get a glass of water, whatever you'd like to do. Okay, so as we're filtering in, we are going to be transitioning into our debrief. So it's really important to give a moment after the simulation to step outside of roles and reflect on your experiences. And in this format, the way that we're going to run it today is first, we'll take a moment to reflect on these questions individually. And while we're taking that moment, Yasmin is going to be creating smaller breakout rooms with different people from your original groups so that once you've had the moment to reflect on some of these uh, prompts, you'll be entered into a smaller group where you can share with that group. And then after that, we'll bring you back to the larger plenary session where you can share out, you know, you can elect a representative who can highlight some of the things that your group touched upon, but we'll try to hear from the majority of the groups and we'll finish this session uh, after a bit of these questions and these prompts. If you have specific facilitation questions, you can also bring those up, type those into the chat. We'll be monitoring, monitoring all of that. So first let's all just take about 60 seconds to take a look at these questions and reflect on how you're feeling and some of the things that you're thinking about after leaving the simulation. And Yasmin will be queuing up your breakout room. All right, welcome back everyone. We realize you might not have had the full time to continue your discussions. Um, but we're, since we're a little bit pressed for time, you can see how long you might need to allocate for this simulation in this format, moving online. Um, negotiations itself takes up some time for moving people to different groups, moving them back to their original groups. So it's, it's good to, to keep in mind some time for that debrief. Um, but what I wanted to quickly show you is a typical way that we suggest running the debrief is, um, allowing everyone to first have a moment to share and talk about their experiences, how they felt, um, and what might have surprised them, and then move into some of the real world um, events or pledges that are, are being made to kind of give some context, bring it back to our, our current day and time, and talk about some of the insights that you and your participants um, received from this experience. And that could be anything about um, the scale and urgency of climate action that's needed from looking at the model, or maybe it's from some of the insights that come from the um, experience stepping into a role of someone else, whether you're in the position of a developing nation or you're in the position of the US, you can see that there are some insights about those types of power struggles and different equity considerations. And then usually the debrief transitions from there to, okay, well, we, here's the problem. You know, this is what we've learned. This is how we felt and what can we do? What can you do? And so there's that natural uh, transition to, you know, where are those signs of hope that as a facilitator, it's great to have um, some, some facts or some messaging prepared for that. And then also different ways that um, you can give space to your participants to think about action. Now, one of those things um, that you could do is transition at that point to uh, talking about En-ROADS. So I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with the En-ROADS model. This is the sibling model to the C-ROADS model. Um, and it really is focused on 
solutions. And so you can see all the various solutions available to you. And it's just, you know, the same as C-ROADS, it's also very user-friendly and intuitive and you're receiving direct feedback here. But thank you so much for coming today. And you, again, will be receiving a follow-up email and I can also just quickly share some contact information for if you'd like to reach out to Climate Interactive, Yasmin, or myself here. So thank you so much. Hope you have a wonderful day today.